You're listening to Empire by Design, episode 77. Hey, hey, I'm Katie White, coach, consultant, transformation facilitator, action taker, empire builder, and this is Empire by Design. In this show, we're building empires, we're sharing stories, and we're getting up close and personal on the strategies that make an empire in today's online world. Get all the show notes, past episodes and more at katiewyatt.me. For now, settle in for the ride. Hey, Empire Builders. I'm so, 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 so excited about today's show. This is a new frontier in Katie's podcast, Empire by Design, because in today's show, I am sharing with you a real coaching call. So I have got the lovely yoga teacher, Stephanie Cunningham, on the podcast, and I've given her an hour of coaching and we've recorded it and you get to listen in. We're going to talk about podcast strategy, the process of getting guests on your podcast, as well as plan out Stephanie's launch. There's a couple of podcasts that I really love who are doing this coaching call thing, like sharing their live coaching calls. I really love Natalie Ekdahl's coaching calls on Biz Chicks podcast. And I know I've mentioned Natalie before. She was also my guest on the show a couple of weeks ago, episode 75. And I've also popped a link in the show notes to the URL where you can go and see all of just Natalie's coaching call episodes. And also I've discovered through Natalie the Flipped Lifestyle podcast with, with I've forgotten the names, Jocelyn and somebody, they're fantastic. All of their podcast episodes are pretty much coaching sessions with uh, members from their membership community. And, you know, I think it's a really great, a really great, tool. I love listening to other people's. I love hearing. There's something quite magical and I'm sure it's actually based in science more than magic. But when you listen to somebody else being coached, you're you're listening with a different part of your brain. So you get insights into your own situation that you would probably miss if the coaching was being directed at you. Like there's something that happens. I don't know if you've experienced this. It's why I love being in a mastermind. Uh, it, you know, there's so many cool things about it. So I really, really hope that you enjoy it. It's terrifying to hit publish on it and expose your own, you know, the skill that I make money on. This is what I do. And it's a very exposing to put that out into the world. But I think it's really important uh, both for you to learn more stuff, get more insights into what you're doing in your business, but it's also important for me. I think it helps me sharpen my craft and it also helps me connect with you. So if you have been considering working with me, then this is a really great way to try me on, have a test drive. <laughs> Uh, so one thing I did want to say before I introduce you to Stephanie and we get stuck in was, and this is really for Stephanie as well, was one thing that we didn't cover in the conversation that was in Stephanie's application form was Stephanie worrying that in the episodes of her podcast that she's recorded so far, and it's not live yet, but I'll let you know when it is, that she was teaching too much rather than interviewing. And all of her podcast episodes have been interviews so far. I see a lot of people doing interview shows and commenting that they feel like that. They feel like they're talking too much, that they want to almost teach rather than just engage with the guest. And as a listener, it can be, you know, not a great experience if it feels like the host is putting themselves in front of the guest in the show. So this is something that I wanted to talk about quickly and really challenge you if this is relevant to you and also challenge Stephanie on. And that question is, are you actually meant to be doing an interview show or a teaching show? I remember hearing when I was at We Are Podcast last year, the fabulous Omar and Nicole from the $100 MBA show talked about the first podcast that they created before $100 MBA show, and it was an interview show 
and it failed. It failed miserably. And when they went back to really reflect on why it had failed and what they needed to do to create a successful show, they realised that their strength was teaching. They are both trained teachers and so they created a new format which is all short, sharp teachings about business. I think that we, it's the go-to format is to create an interview show. And it doesn't mean that it's the right show for you. If you are a teacher, you might create a better show by just teaching. So one to think about. I'm absolutely honoured that Stephanie stepped up and exposed herself to us all. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Check out her website at yogalightness.com.au and let's meet Stephanie. Stephanie Cunningham, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you for opening yourself up to being coached by me and and sharing this with the world um you know I'm a little bit nervous I don't know if you are (laughs) um not yet but we'll see what the questions are right (laughs) oh exactly well thank you and welcome why don't you as it would be great if you could just tell me a little bit about your business and where you're at what you do uh, and that so that will help us kind of understand who you are okay um i started i moved to australia about 16 years ago and because of the visa i had i couldn't work so i started yoga classes as something to do and i really loved it and um i found that there were a lot of older people that would have benefited for from yoga if it had been presented correctly and so i decided to go get some training and and then i started uh, my own uh, classes for seniors. So I've been teaching now for about 10 years and I've taught some younger people cause I taught in a gym for a while, but, um, I, I mostly teach seniors. And then it became really obvious to me that it was almost impossible to get any comprehensive kind of training in teaching yoga to seniors here in Australia. I had to go to the United States, um, to get mine. And so I decided to set up a a course online and I did do workshops face-to-face workshops for a while but I decided that um, what I'd really like to do is um, get the word out that there are lots of ways to do yoga and not just the way it's it's presented in advertising and things it's it's pretty narrow so I decided to start a podcast called Changing the Face of Yoga, and I'm interviewing teachers who teach um, children or seniors or people with curvy bodies, as they say, which I rather like that, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um, uh, people who teach people who have conditions like arthritis, diabetes, Parkinson's, those kinds of things to show the public, if you will, or even other yoga teachers how, how diverse yoga can be and how beneficial it is for almost everyone. And so I've had um, quite a few people really interested in being on the on the podcast because I think they feel like me, they'd really like to get out that word that yoga is for everybody. Awesome. That's fantastic. Um, and I think it's, this, it's probably twofold the benefit there because you're, you know, you're almost inspiring this movement with the public that yoga can be for everybody. But there's a business benefit there because what you're really talking about is niching and how powerful niching and serving a particular audience as a yoga teacher can be. Have you found that in your business that by narrowing in on the seniors market, it's actually helped you grow your business? Um, I have, uh, mainly because I'm kind of in that age group. So I think they feel real comfortable with me that, um, yeah, I know, I know what your body's doing because mine's doing it too. (laughs) And so, um, and I do yoga and so can you. So, and I, yeah, because there's a lot and lots and lots of yoga teachers out there and, it is a good um, idea to niche. Um, a lot of people are doing children's yoga right now. Trauma yoga is becoming more 
well known. Um, those kinds of things where you do a specific type of yoga to for a specific um, market is beginning to be much more common in um, in the whole yoga industry, shall we say? Right. And seniors is a bit behind everybody else. But with the boomers aging and with their children aging, because most mm -hmm. of the boomers' children are in their 40s and 50s, and their bodies are starting to change too. So, yeah, it's it's it could be a very um, lucrative market. <laughs> yeah. So you, right so you do face to face yoga classes. You've got your online training courses. You're right. launching the podcast. Is there anything else I've I've missed that you do as part of your business? Um, the only thing, and it's because I'm launching it also, is um, I'm putting together a um, little compendium, if you will, uh, on, on kind of an ebook. I think. I'm not actually sure what an ebook is, but anyway, it would go, it would go over on an email. It would just be a whole um, illustrations and instructions of modifications of poses for people that perhaps can't get down on the floor or they um, maybe a few can't even get out of a chair, but they can still do things that will strengthen and open joints. And so I'm going to um, put that up on my website, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, um, just to give something that, that people might have as a reference. Fantastic. And so how can I help you today? What are you struggling with or what would you like help on? Well, um, the podcast is, well, our goal is uh, the 1st of March to launch the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, I've done two interviews. I did two interviews last week. I have three scheduled for this week, and then I will do my, you know, solo intro. So I'll have six done within the next two weeks, and then um, a couple of more probably the last week. So I'm, I think I'm doing pretty well. I think there's been some issues, and I didn't. I was totally expecting them about process, about what you do first and then what you do second because I've just decided I have to go back and ask all these people that I've interviewed that I need a little something else from them other than an info sheet that we had. So that's been, we've been working that through. I think that's going to be okay, but I'm certainly willing if you have any little tips or anything um, just to make it a little easier because um, I, I'm really grateful to people that are willing to interview and I, I don't want to, you know, overstay my welcome, shall we say, by asking them for all kinds of things because I just thought of it. Sure. So do you mean going back because you want a photograph or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's really about how you're managing your guest interaction. Yes. And yes. then also you mentioned just really how to promote the launch of the show. Uh, cool. Okay. Well, why don't we start with those? And then if you, if we go in other directions, we can see how we go. So firstly, the guest process. I mean, I find that as much as we can automate that, the better. So are you using an online scheduling tool to book people in or are you doing it with yes. a bit of manual back and forth? No, um, it's, it's, um, because we're, we're drawing people from all over the world. Um, a lot from America, South Africa and stuff. So it's very hard to do it uh, manually because, mm -hmm. you know, the time, time changes zones. and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, we have one and it, it was a bit cranky for a while, but it does seem to have straightened out <laughs> and people from all, from everywhere can, can now access it and get the right time and everything. So, so far it's working. Um, it, and yeah, that's been really, really helpful because it, it could be quite difficult to figure out, you know, are you 18 hours ahead or, you know, 17 or whatever. Oh, Maybe yeah. You just don't state. even want to go there. You want yeah, you want yeah. a computer to do that for you. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> and does that tool send automatic reminders to your guest? Well, I don't know. I was getting automatic reminders from you saying, you know, we have the podcast, yes. we have the podcast, and I thought, I wonder if mine does that. I had I the very best thing I absolutely did was I hired a VA who is a tech person. And she has done all of the setup of all of this, mm -hmm. and then she's going to write me up a manual. Um, but I haven't done any of it, so I'm not really the right person to ask. I will ask her, though, because I thought that's a good idea for them to 
just send those out automatically and you don't have to think about it. Yes, it, do, it shouldn't even be a person having to do it. So if you ask your VA to look at your email scheduling tool uh, to see they most of them do have the ability to send reminders and then you can customize the reminder so as you would have seen from the reminders you got for our interview it has in there little tips like make sure you've you know you're in a quiet room and you've got headphones I can't even remember what it says but I think I say you know make sure if there's kids in the house they're not using Netflix and using all your your data limit yeah. and all of those sorts of things and I think I in your in the intake form when you booked in I ask for a link to a headshot or your business links so you could really just copy mine since you've been through that process and then tweak it for other things you might want to ask for or get rid of things you don't want to ask for but if you can automate that through your scheduling tool then you don't even have to think about it anymore. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's all these details that can really bog you down and yet they're really, really important at the end. So I will I will definitely find out if we have that going and if we don't, how do we get it? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most tools have it, so I'd be very surprised if it, if it didn't. I use Acuity scheduling and it has it. Uh, I know a lot of people are using Calendly. Um, yeah, we've got Calendly. Yeah. Okay, well, that definitely has the ability to send reminders. I don't know if it's on the paid or the free. I'm sure it's on the free version. But anyway, get your VA to look into it and then you can script a very easy reminder and that will help you, um, you know, in just avoiding having to go back to guess. And, you know, we've all been there. So to yeah. don't beat yourself up about it. <laughs> no, I thought there, there would be little glitches like that because you always think, no, why didn't I think of that? That's so obvious. <laughs> oh, but it is, you know, <laughs> there's so many things to think about when you're starting a show that yeah. it does feel overwhelming. And in fact, I'm actually like pulling together a whole lot of uh, guest interaction I suppose templates or swipe files as a little mini product because I know that it is something that people kind of aren't sure how to start, but it can be quite simple. So yeah, it's a really great point and I'm glad that you raised it. Yeah. So with the launch, tell me a bit more about the show. Is it going to be a weekly show? No, I think it will be at least at the beginning, it will be every other week, every fortnight. Um, I'm gonna. I'll have. I'll release three at once. The on March first. Um, I got that from you, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then from then on, it'll be um, probably every other uh, week. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to going weekly. Uh, I just want to make sure that we have the whole process down so that um, it goes smoothly. Uh, and I think it may take a couple months for that to happen. So um, I'm being cautious until then. Yeah, I think that's smart. I, it took me two years to go from oh. every other <laughs> week to weekly. And yeah. that's just because I'm, you know, I, I'm not in my business full time and all of those sorts of things. So I think I actually think it's a lot better to go to increase your frequency rather than to decrease it later because you've you've started strong and then lost your momentum yeah so yeah, tell me though what do you really want the show before we get into the launch stuff and I can give you a whole lot of ideas on that but what do you want the show to do for your business and which part of your business because you obviously have your yoga classes which are a quite a local thing but then you work with the yoga teachers so is this really about raising awareness on the on the yoga teaching side I mean the you know teaching the teachers side uh, I, it is I think more uh, essentially what I wanted my goal is for the business was to be known as an expert in this particular niche and um I do blogs and I do Facebook and all those things that you do, but I thought that a podcast that had a, a slightly larger view um, of yoga would, would also be very beneficial for me. Um, 
Yeah, I, I've sent it. I've already started on the launch by sending it out to my email list, of which one one list is potential or potential clients that are mostly teachers, and saying, you know, this is available, and I, it's just it's just a way to get the information out that that yoga is really good for seniors because it's not something that you're taught in your basic training and. It's like I said, it's getting kids and pregnant women and all that has become much more popular in the past 10 years or five years. And seniors are kind of lagging behind, shall we say, even though they're the biggest population group. And so I thought that this was a way to get it out to a lot of different places, to the public, to teachers, to the industry, almost, if you will. Mm. Okay, so there's, there's really that raising... I guess your profile as an expert in this area, which I think a lot of the aspects you've talked about will help you to do that. I would suggest um, you've mentioned lots of interviews of not only doing interview shows because often we can end up in the in the habit of shining the light on other people's businesses and really you want to you know allow some time and some of that spotlight for you to talk about what you've learned and what you know and what you believe that will really help to cement you as an expert in the space so I don't know if you have solo shows planned in your content calendar well you're the third person that's told me that. <laughs> so, so I believe it. I'm <laughs> glad we're consistent. I can't really come up with a concept for it. I mean, a couple of people said, well, what, that, that what's very popular is to have people, you know, you're actually sitting in the same room and you're kind of interviewing. And I thought, well, I could bring in my students that I teach, you know, and we could talk about what, not particularly my classes, but just, you know, why they like yoga and what it's done for them and, you know, what kind of poses they like. And we could do that. Or I could do, I dabbled in other parts of yoga um, to help seniors like retirement coaching. And I thought, well, I could, I could do something about that. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm just unclear about what to do. Somebody said, you know, you can take all the tips that people have given you over the past month and, and go through those and stuff. I, I don't quite know what to do. I, I understand that I should do it and I understand why I should do it. I just can't come up with a concept for it <laughs> yet. I think what you need to do is keep coming back to who is that for? And if you're, I mean, if you're trying to grow your the coaching of other yoga teachers and you're trying to get other yoga teachers to examine or consider this niche then you know ne- i think that you should be creating the solo shows for them so yes i think the idea of talking to some existing yoga students is a good idea but what about talking to other yoga teachers a bit like we're doing now who want to explore that senior yoga coaching and maybe you're you know you're you're doing that with them so that's not a solo show it's more like we're doing with um you know the coaching but that gives the potential yoga teacher who wants to work with you a bit of a taste of what you do i'd also think about um, your courses so you've got you've got some courses for yoga teachers to be teaching seniors is that right is that what they're about yes yeah so I would be looking at I mean to do a course to develop a course you've obviously had to think through the step-by-step process or what a teacher really needs to understand to put together a yoga program for the senior audience. So yep. I would almost, if there's, and I'm picking a number out of the air, but if there was a six modules to that course or six key steps or six key things to think about, then you could turn that as a high, at a high level into a podcast series. So the six, the six steps to, um, building a yoga class for seniors for example could be a mini series and you go through each step so even if you're you know giving away some of the content in your course for free because it's on the podcast it's also going to demonstrate your expertise and bring people 
closer to you that are interested in that space and then they you know might go on to purchase the course as well does that make sense oh that's a great idea i really like that idea I, i'll have to think about the six things are but i can do that that's no problem oh and yeah, i'd that, look at that's a great idea and i can hold on to that because that makes sense to me whereas i was a little fuzzy on what to do other than that so i thank you for that that's a great one and the other thing is you know you talked about the fact that seniors are kind of forgotten in this whole yoga niche so yeah. i would talk about that talk about the fact what you see happening in the industry you've you know you mentioned that i'm and i'm sure there's a bit of a rant in you if i pushed you about this whole i guess the the way that we all perceive yoga as being you know these skinny young women <laughs> bending in all sorts of ways and how you know and you believe that it it doesn't have to be that way so i would think about the things that make you really passionate about this area and turn those into solo shows okay okay the other question i had was about um you know, if, if you're profiling a lot of yoga teachers that are teaching other niches, so you mentioned the kids niche and the trauma and post, um, I guess, illness and chronic illness and that sort of thing, how do you want, because you're not, you don't offer anything in that space, do you? So what's the connection there and I understand there's a sort of a bigger movement aspect to what you're doing, a bit of an educating the public aspect. But like, how will you prioritize, I suppose, your business in this podcast and and giving enough weight to the seniors' conversation? Well, I have several of the teachers that I've already taught who are going to be interviewed, and I thought since this is my podcast, I think probably every third one will be about seniors. Mm -hmm. And some of them um, will, well, all of them so far will be the teachers that I've taught. So that's another way to um, get that, that this is what I do kind of stuff, because um, it will say, okay, these people went through the program, they, they came out, this is what they're doing. Um, and unless I'm way off the mark, and I don't think I am, um, they'll be very, very happy to have taught seniors. It's it's a very um, satisfying way to teach yoga um, because they're such great people, seniors mm. are. So um, I think they will be very positive um, podcasts. All of them will be positive, but I think the positive ones about the seniors is another way to, to keep that focus. Fantastic. And so how will you, are you planning on having or do you have already a Facebook group for yoga teachers or like is, are you thinking about how you can continue the conversation that you're going to start on your podcast? Um, the VA is, I set up a uh, Facebook group just for the podcast um, mm -hmm. And she's putting all this stuff in on it, and I haven't looked at it lately, so I don't know where it is. But that is, um, that's, I think, where we'll have the conversations and, and things, you know, because already just with the two I've done, I've gotten some really good tips and stuff, and I think those would be good conversation starters. And um, I'll, I haven't actually, though, put that into the launch material, so I probably should. <laughs> I think it, I think it, uh, Facebook group could be a really good idea because you are really talking to that niche yoga teaching audience that want to focus on a particular niche, whether it's seniors or something else, and want, I suppose, to connect with other people that are doing it that might be willing to share ideas, particularly you know, a lot of yoga teaching is a very locally based thing. Somebody in Sydney connecting with somebody in, I don't know, New Zealand that are both teaching seniors, there's not going to be any competitiveness there. So it could be a really great collective sharing and improving space. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. And there's a lot of people that teach only in retirement villages and others that teach in community halls. And so there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of different modes of things that happen in, in teaching senior yoga. So, yeah, there could be some competition, but in general, there probably wouldn't be. 
Mm. Yoga teachers don't strike me as the type to get all competitive and nasty. <laughs> no, in general, they're they're very good people. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So, okay, so then let's talk about the launch. Um, you because you talked about you know what to do beyond telling your email list and and putting it all over social media and you've talked about having more than one episode to go live with which I think is really important three or four is a great number and then having enough in your buffer that you can keep releasing them consistently without feeling stressed that you're going to run out of content and um, the other thing to think about is how you're naming the titles of your episode. So really be thinking about the person you want to listen to that show. If they went into iTunes or Google and was searching for information related to what that show is about, really think about titling your episodes that way. So okay. Yeah, so because I, I see a lot of podcasters, they will title their episode something like, the Anna Smith Show episode one and then the name of a guest. And yeah. if I'm scrolling and a lot of people who are using, you know, looking for podcasts to listen to, whether they're new to podcasting or whether they're, you know, they just like to use podcasts to find information, that means nothing to them. The name means nothing and it's kind of, you know, repetitive because every there's lots of other things telling me the name of the podcast but then the guest name is also not overly relevant unless it's somebody really famous because mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about on that show but if you titled it I don't know something like build a build a yoga business working with seniors like that tells me exactly what I'm going to get and it might be something that is similar to what I've searched for in the search of the directory, whether it's iTunes or, or somewhere else. So I think that's a really key thing that a lot of podcasters don't think about. Yeah, no, I think that's that's excellent. I can I can really see that. I can see because I've done it myself. When I started this, I looked at what kinds of podcasts were out there about yoga. And so many of them, I, I had to listen to them to figure out what it was about. And that after a while was not very efficient. <laughs> no, it's not very efficient. And because we have so much choice now in the podcasting directories, um, you know, we, we won't give it that time. And you've also got to think about people on their smartphones, which is how most people these days, the statistics say, how they're listening. If you're in the podcast app and looking at the episode titles of a show that you're considering listening to you can only you can't even always see the whole title you can sometimes only see the first you know however many characters so you've really got to front load your promise in that in the start of your title okay that's a, yeah that's a good point awesome that's good. The next thing, and you may be doing this already, but is to just make sure that you have a really specific call to action in your show. And that might be firstly asking your audience to subscribe and review the show in iTunes, because that's a, obviously a really important way for us to find other audience members, but also to share the show with a friend um, okay. is, you know, is a nice thing to do. Uh, and you might also have a call to action about your Facebook group to come and join the Facebook group. And I would set up a because often, you know, a direct link to Facebook is kind of messy and impossible to remember, but you could easily set up a bit.ly link or on if you on your website, if you've got the pretty link plugin, you can set up a an easy link that way your VA will know how to do that. So I would just say to her, I need a very easy link to share on the show that will drive people to my Facebook group. Okay. Okay, good point. All right, I can do that. I'm, I'm writing all this down. So <laughs> Cool. Oh, excellent. Um, and then the other thing, and obviously it's being recorded, so you can always listen back. <laughs> true, true. Oh, I forgot that. <laughs> yes. Um, the other thing to think about is, and we t touched on this when we talked about your guest, how you're reaching out to guests, is 
having a template email, and this is something your VA can do as well, that they then send out to the guest once the show is live to make it really easy for the guests to share it with their audience. So it could be as simple as a, a link to your website or a link to iTunes. It could be some people, you know, go completely over the top and they'll write four different suggested tweets that the guest could copy and tweet um, or a suggested Facebook post and provide different images like you can you can keep it simple or go bigger but the goal is to make it really really easy and enticing for your guests to share the show so then that's another way to kind of get you know more attention on the show as you launch and ongoing yeah um i actually ha had um a template made that will uh that i'll take a quote from the interview that we had and i thought it would send that to the to the guest and say you know if you could put this up on your website or your facebook group or send it to your friends or whatever <laughs> i'll yeah. figure out what to say later um because i think people like you know, something personal that said, yeah, this is what I did and this is what I said. And and I don't know, we'll see if it works, but it, it was worth it to me to see if I couldn't get that template together just to um, see if that would pique their interest, shall we say, so they'd want yeah. to send it. I think that's a really good idea. And I use templates just in Canva for my social media posts. And it just, it makes you more efficient to begin with because you're just changing, you know, the template for each episode. But it is something that can be quite shareable. So I think that's a really good idea. Um, are you going to be in iTunes? I've sort of been talking like I've assumed it, but you can <laughs> you can have a podcast without. I thought I thought it would be um, my VA just asked me that yesterday uh, in iTunes and SoundCloud because I actually have an Android, so I wouldn't be able a phone, so I wouldn't be able to um, download. I, is what I've heard from iTunes on it. So no, she thought we needed both to um, be as. Um, out there you know as possible with the biggest range yes well i like the sound of this va um because <laughs> she's really really good <laughs> awesome she's absolutely right it's best the itunes is the mothership of podcasts there's obviously podcasts available in lots of other places and you mentioned sad soundcloud stitcher radio is another place where i would suggest getting her to put the show and Will you be self-hosting it? Will it be on your website as well? Uh, yes, it will. Yeah, so um, I think it's really important to have all of those places. And, you know, the thing is, at the moment, I mean, I'm just even reflecting on my own statistics and what I know across the industry to be true. It's probably 70, 80 percent or more of listeners are listening through iTunes. But that will, you know, that will change. It's becoming, you know, slowly, but easier and easier for people on Android to listen. People are listening through the in, like just through the websites and things like that. So you've yeah, the more that you can kind of have your presence in the big directories the more chance you're going to find more listeners okay. yeah i i will have to admit I, I i wanted to do the website but i haven't really thought much about it so i guess i'll have to get on that too mm. <laughs> it, it's just i have the feel it's kind of like when you learn something new you know it just takes a long time to get it all together but it's always worth it if you can just work your way through it yeah it's sort of that one foot in front of the other but yeah. the other thing I would say with podcasting is you are pretty much doing a mini launch every time a podcast episode comes out so people obsess a lot about the big launch when the show goes live and of course we want to give it the best chance possible out of the gates but it's not the only opportunity. Every week or every two weeks, you're going to be doing half of these things all over again to promote your new episode and your new guest and the, and the show. So don't worry too much. Like if you don't have the website that well set up to begin with, but the show is in iTunes, then just do that and then add all the other bits. Yeah, okay. 
Mm. The only other a couple of little tips, I guess, is to pop your podcast into your email signature so that, you know, I mean, I, at the moment, I'm trying to get 100,000 downloads in 2017. So I've written my email signature whenever I send an email says, help me hit my goal, you know, subscribe, rate and review the podcast. And, and that's hyperlinked so that people can click and listen. But you could have your pod cover image in your email signature if you wanted or you could just say you know hear from yoga teachers on um you know whatever you want to say about the podcast and have a link there that people can easily click okay that's good yeah i find that's a really good um you know just an automated way to be telling people about the show that you don't even have to think about um, and that you can also do that on your Facebook business page. So I know you have a Facebook business page. You yep. can the top, you know, you can pin a post to the top of the page that people often will look at first when they like your page. So I would put something about either the podcast or the Facebook group or both in there to, you know, get the word out. Okay. To yeah. Right. that's good yeah those those are really good things but you don't I didn't even think of them so I really appreciate that Oh, that's like, that's, you know, I mean, I've been doing it for like over two years. So I've tried, I feel like I've tried everything and there's still things that I haven't tried. So yes. it is, and they are often the things, I mean, you know, everyone says, well, of course you'll email your list, but you'll, uh, you'll find that you'll go through patches where you'll think, oh my goodness, I haven't emailed my list about my show for four yeah. weeks. So we often know these things, but we don't always do them. Um, so it's just, you know, having a few things in your kit bag. We like the automated things because you can set it and forget it. <laughs> yes, I agree with that. That is so nice. Yeah. The other was... thing, and this is probably more for once you're launched and you've sort of got over the, you know, the hurdle of all the things we have to think about when we're launching a podcast, is to start thinking about getting yourself interviewed on other podcasts that are talking to your target market. Market. So yoga teachers, there are quite a few podcasts out there. Well, not quite a few, but I know I've come across a few that are really for yoga teachers or, um, you know, running their yoga businesses. So that could be really good places to target um, to get your message out and for you to be on the other side of the of the microphone, because that's also how your credibility will kind of be exposed and highlighted and it will bring new audience to you as well so okay. if you know you could start with if you know other podcasters in the space you could suggest an like swapping an interview swap like I'll have you on my show you know will you have me on your show that can be a really easy way to start the process if you're worrying about pitching um, I've done a whole episode on pitching other podcasts, so I can't remember what number it is. I think it's 60 something, but anyway, I can send you that and I'll put it in the show notes, um, for other people that want to pitch podcasts. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll put that on the end of the list. <laughs> All this other stuff will take me a little while to get around, even with my BA who is spectacular, but, um, yeah, no, I, I understand that. Um, I, I'm, Maybe you could, if you were, would remember, if you remember where you found those yoga. I haven't found very many yoga podcasts um, at all. So I was just wondering, maybe I'm looking in the wrong places. <laughs> I was on iTunes and, and and a lot of them start, but they don't go on or they just have, you know, four or five episodes and then it's, they don't seem to do it anymore. So if you see, if you hear of one or see of one, let me know. I would appreciate that because I, I can't find hardly any. Mm, I'm, tr I'm trying to think of a woman that I actually know online who rebranded recently. I'm trying to think of her name while we're talking. I'll find her podcast while we're talking. Um, and it's, you know, she's, she coaches yoga teachers. So she's definitely in that space. I just can't think of what it's called, but it will come to me. It's not Amy McDonald, is it? No, it's a, it's, her name's PJ, PJ oh, Ann. PJ Aguilar. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I um yeah, she uh she saw one of my requests for interviews and she um uh gave me some I don't know, she gave them to me because like I said, it's all go through the VA. <laughs> um or she talked to them about coming on the show because she thought she had three or four people she knew really well. So I didn't I didn't realize for some reason that she had a podcast. I thought she was I was on her Facebook group for a while, so, um, but that's a good one. I'll, I'll, talk, I'll, I'll see what I can do about that. Yeah, yeah definitely, Rachel. I'm happy to um, connect you too if, if you'd like that. But her podcast is called Yoga Biz Coach. I found it now. Um, oh. But, yeah, if I, I can't think of the names of others. I'm, I mean, I'm probably thinking of less than five that I know <laughs> I've seen. So you're right. There's not huge amounts out there. Um, so, the, oh, that's, that's the other one, Yoga Healer, or I don't know if that's actually for yoga teachers or if that's just for people about, oh, no, it is, for yoga teachers and wellness professionals. So the Yoga Healer podcast okay. is another one. Uh, and I better, I'm just going to write those down as well so I don't forget. Uh, yeah, Okay. Awesome. So yeah, I do think that's a really good way to find new audience as well because and raise your own credibility and expertise in the space because people that are listening to other podcasts are more likely to just jump across and listen to yours because we're already your um we're already podcast consumers. So so okay. yeah. Great. Is there anything else, any other, I feel like I've overwhelmed you with all of this list of things that you can do. So is there anything else that you wanted to ask about or talk about or should we wrap it up? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I, I am all involved in launching right now. I probably have, I'll have a million questions tomorrow when, you know, <laughs> yeah. when I think about it. <laughs> But, but right now, I think you've given me quite a bit to think about and to do. And so it's been really, really valuable because I, I, I do have your launch, um, you know, your little launch the checklist. Uh, checklist. And I've been going through that. But, um, and maybe I did see this and just totally spaced it. But these sound like some really other great things to do. So, um, yeah, I, I especially like naming the title I thought that that's really a good idea because I I have been really frustrated with some titles trying to figure out what was going on so um, I think that's great mm, and that's a really you know good thing in itself is just noticing what we do really like or what annoys us about other podcasts because that gives us lots of insight into what we want to do too yeah yeah I agree I, I did want to say I really liked, um, was it Anna Chisholm? Was that, I don't know. Yes. I, really I did listen to that one and I loved how um, it evolved after the six months, how, you know, she was going to do all this stuff and then she launched it and then it, it evolved into something that was very close to what she had, but, but had, you know, real specific differences. And I thought, oh, well, that, that's a good lesson that things may evolve and they may not come out exactly as you planned but mm. she seemed really happy with it so <laughs> she yeah, is thing. Yeah. yeah and you're right and that is the message that I think if there's anything I can say to people and to you who are about to launch is yes like don't get too caught up even if you can't answer half the questions that I've asked about what's the purpose and what's it going to do for your business and all of that which I do quiz people on but it does evolve and I loved that Anna and I caught up six months later and things had changed so much for her because it you know to me that's the magic of why we start doing something like this is to see what it brings what opportunities come and things always change so yeah thank you for for recognizing that podcast series I did love that and um, Anna's fantastic so thank you yeah no I, I I thought that was really great I did because um yeah it, it, you have all this stuff that you want to do and I I have a business coach and she says exactly the same thing you do why are you doing this and what is it how is it going to affect your business I tend to get excited about things and think they're really cool and I don't sometimes think it all the way through. Oh, that never <laughs> happens to anyone else, Stephanie. No, I don't. <laughs> That's really strange people. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so 
I, I do have to keep my mind on the business aspect of it because it, I really love talking to these yoga teachers and I really get excited about what they're doing because they're doing really, really wonderful things. I talked to somebody who, who um, teaches kids on the autistic spectrum mm -hmm. and you know, it's just it's just really wonderful to, to hear all of this and I really do have to keep a business hat on too, which isn't as easy for me. Mm. But I think you've you know, I think you've got a nice blended approach at the moment. You might get six months in and go, Do you know what, it's time for me to amplify myself more. But I think just your interest and curiosity and inspiration about what other people are doing in a very similar space to you is also going to have its benefits so you know I think that I think that you've got a really good place to start and really excited to see where it goes so do let me know when it's live so that I can share it with my tribe and thank you so much for coming on to my show and and letting me give you homework and give you some <laughs> advice. <laughs> well, thank you. you. It's been very, very valuable. I really appreciate you taking the time. It was, and it was fun. <laughs> oh, good, good. Oh, I'm glad. Fun is a good word. <laughs> it is a good word. <laughs> thank you so much. And I should say before we go, where can people find you if they want to learn more about what you're doing? What's a, a web address or somewhere you'd like to send people? Okay. Um, my website is www.yogalightness, which is all one word, .com .au. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Have an amazing day. Thank you too. Thanks. Thank you again to Stephanie for really opening up her business and her podcasting journey for me to coach her, for you to listen. I hope that you've got at least one aha for your own business from the conversation. I'd love you to tweet me and tell me about it, Katie T. Wyatt on Twitter. Now, if you would like to get free coaching with me and be part of the show, I am opening up this opportunity to my podcast audience. Now, it doesn't have to be about podcasting. It does have to be about business because, you know, that's what I do. So if you think that you have a challenge in your business or you're looking for the next opportunity in your business, it might be about your business strategy. It could be about taking action, goal setting. It could be about podcasting or your content strategy overall. If you have a business challenge that you would like to work on with me and you're happy to share it with the world on the podcast, I would love you to apply. To apply, you can go to bit.ly forward slash be on Katie's show. It's that simple. There is an application form because I have to kind of look through and consider the best fit for the show, but please apply and you might be the next coaching call on Empire by Design. Don't forget to come back in a week's time when we will be back with our very next episode. We've loved contributing to your empire building today. Please share us with a fellow empire builder so that we can help them too. Remember, hashtag 100K Empire Army. Thank you to Luke at The Wellness Pro for production and editing, to all of our guests and to you, our most important empire building listeners. You should also check out my other podcast, Hashtag Lady Boss Chats, where L. Roberts and I chat all things Lady Boss life. You feel like you've just pulled up a cosy armchair with your biz bestie. Find us in your favourite podcast app or at theladyboss project.com.